open the meeting. It is 6.35. Um, open Meeting Act is posted and will say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have a fairly short agenda tonight, so hopefully we will be here until midnight. Um, the um, roll call starts with James. Here. Bob. Present. Present. Larry. Here. Don. Here. And who did I miss? Did I get y'all? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so all present. Um, so the minutes are in your packet and I'll make an apology for not getting the packets out Thursday like I promised to spend a half of week. So um, several things have happened behind the scenes, even though the agenda is short. Um, so those are just the minutes of the last meeting. We approved all the others. Um, so I think those were sent today. If they the got out to you today, fine. If not, you should So any questions or if you had a chance to read the minutes, I'll take a look at those. First one then gets to make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. James made a motion to approve. I'll second. Second by Bob. So we'll start with Bob. Yes. Uh, Larry. Yes. Don. Yes. And James. Yes. Okay. So um, don't have any uh, kinds of ordinance or anything to consider tonight. There, we don't have any requests from the public that uh, has come in. So we have the the claims are there. Um, if there's any questions on that. Um, as far as estimate over actual, I'm assuming the water bill is because of the user? Yeah. Um, pool, fill in the pool. The pool and is a big, that's yeah, always a big yeah. deal. I, I assume that it was a summer thing. Yep, and some of the personal uses scared me to death. I thought for sure they were. <laughs> you know, because they're just with the lawns, what, sprinkling and so forth. And even though we're limited, there's more than other amounts. Payroll. Payroll is everybody. Um, Fifteen grand was pretty typical month, and thirty-two grand was. Put it again. Oh. Yeah. This will be, no. this will be high. Yeah. Okay. You're going to see, um, you know, Spike. with the pool work, you're going to see a lot of differences. You're going to have electric bills down there to be higher okay. and those kind of things. And then as far as the garbage, then we have people having multiple containers. That's what makes the additional expense there. Because it's double with the estimate. Was it two months? It's two months. It, okay, it's two months. Okay. Somehow. Um, I do want to say while we're on the garbage, though, just in case anybody missed this, we think we put the paper last week or sometime. Um, Brett Davis out of Arts Garbage had suggested, we talked about this some time ago, and apparently when they pick up our recycle, they, the, the drivers or the locally, they separate the cardboard out before they haul it. He said, you know, you got, and we've talked about this, how much cardboard is always in there. said, it takes time and it takes our manpower. So he's, he wanted to put he called and said, can we put it on the tow truck? <coughs> That's going to help us because they're not charging us for it because they're saving money. And they'll pick that cardboard up twice a week, just like they do the bed. So we're talking about the one out of the shop? Yeah. So there's cardboard going in there and like aluminum? No, nothing but cardboard. 
the big, tra the big mixed recycle tra trailer was like it always was. Mm -hmm. They came with one they put right behind it. It's got six lids. It's a two yard, maybe three yard. Okay. And nothing but cardboard goes in there. It's white yeah. in color. White? I haven't yes. been up. It's okay. white. Okay. So what they're hoping is that they'll take all that cardboard out of the recycle trailer. We've been picking up at least twice a month on that. That should reduce that, so that'll reduce the cost of that, and there's no extra charge for the cardboard pickup, so we should come out better. We should save money, and they'll save money on the time they spend sorting. So hopefully it'll be a win-win. Um, we know there's people from out of town who use it. That's you know that's okay as long as it, you know. Um, if you ever are there and you see us out there one day and somebody had bought a rocking chair, the box was in there, I don't know how they got it through the door. <laughs> but the big long, and then if you got, I got the lid up and there's all that film and the, you know, styrofoam and crap and wire, it's garbage. So I got it pulled over there and pulled all that out and threw it and then took it over and put it in our garbage. And then right behind it was like some filmy, <coughs> you know, just garbage. So the guys watch it when they're there. I know I know Ed's pulled stuff out of there. So if you know that something, because if it really gets bad, they'll charge us garbage rates instead of recycle rates, and that gets higher. Uh, Brett is real pleased. He said, you know, basically you're still one of the cleanest ones who would pick it up, that would pick up, so keep it up, you know. But it doesn't hurt to just remind people once in a while that that's, and that may help if we're, if the guy, if the, because people tend to throw the cardboard in their full of stuff, you know. And then if they don't break the box down, then you've got half a trailer full of that. So if we just get that moved over to another place. Yeah, I'm up Just for your information, that dumpster was placed the end of last week, and this morning it was over full already. Of the cardboard. Of cardboard, but the box, some of the boxes weren't broken down sure. like they could have been. So we just want to make sure, I put a little handwritten on a piece of cardboard for now, but we may want to we put some sign I thought about the that. breakdown box. Yes, yeah, put some signs know. there. And I thought about even on the on the other recycle, maybe we could put one that said cardboard back there or something, you know, just if they're not putting it in there. But if they pick it up twice a week, see that'll be gone tomorrow. Right. Yeah. So, just so I think it's a plus. Tell me how come the Black Hills Energy, that's our guest, right? Yes. This was hot enough outside, so I don't understand why we got fourteen hundred dollars on our gas bill when it's summertime. My gas bill is looking nothing. Uh, the heat, the they heated the pool when they first start. There again, we're talking pool. So all that nine hundred dollars is is the pool. Well, the share of it is fourteen. Yeah, that's just the pool. That's a charge to the pool. And, and, and we're always going to have a monthly, you know, you've always got a, a monthly charge. You pay gas all winter. Well, I do too. I pay my monthly too, but my name here. I'm saying monthly we have a base charge, so you're not going to get out of that. So then you add the pool and you have got, you, we got an item. Come in and look at the bills. What else? What is F and O at the bottom of planes? Um, First National Bank, that's the credit card. Okay. McLean, that's part of the street. Yes. And the credit card's high this month because it put something big on it. In fact, it shut our credit off and so somebody. <laughs> I mean, it did. Yes, the asphalt from Menards. We talked about that. Maybe we should get a Menards card that we could put that stuff on. Then that would be separate. Keep track of that. And and no, and maybe set up with no tax and stuff because otherwise they keep tax it. Right. So then if, and we could if maybe even joint con contractors if they would let us. Um, Patrick's got one. Oh. But, but um, then yes. you get that 10% back without yeah. applying for it, and it goes under. So we're going to look into that. Patrick, do you still have lost the tax right now? No. No. Oh, okay. I have, I have a contractor's card from years back, and it pays you back 
like one or two percent. And then Cheryl was trying to explain why that was a problem. Yeah. To, to not use my credit card, or why you want to set up a city one. Don't the city has a credit card though? We do, but not, not at Menards. We're talking about a Menards card. Well, you can't use a city charge for a credit card at Menards? Is that what I'm this, is, this credit card is through First National Bank. Okay? It's a Visa yeah. or whatever it is. All we're saying is that since we're buying so much material for the roads from Menards, it might behoove us to have a separate credit card for Menards. Um, look into yeah, the possibility. Right. See what they can offer us that would be beneficial. Yes, and, some, and we had that for a while with them, and then in the same way with, you know, some of those guys in South Dakota don't think they want to do that, but according to the auditors, they say legally they can't charge you tax. So we've been working on that. Walmart got a little bit nasty for a while, too. Yes, thirteen dollars eighty six cents tax on what tax is picked up on what was the the weekly tax. Absolutely. Yeah. Right now, Menards will not let me out of the store without paying the tax. They they've gone back on what they were doing six months a year ago. We were getting a tax free, and the and the cashier said we can't honor that. We can't do that anymore. And I I think what I think what it is is. We're going to have to go to somebody like the court, like a Menards Internet, you know, because these locals say, well, you don't qualify because of you're not like a like a contractor or non-exempt. But, but we are non-exempt, and just because we're out of state doesn't make a difference. So we've just got to find the right people, you know. A, a Walmart looked us in the eye and said, you're not on the list as a non. Mm -hmm. You know, as a nonprofit, well, every city is. <laughs> so it's it's just getting a hold of the right people, and right now everybody's shorthanded and can't get it. You know, to the big wig either. So, so I'm assuming. Menards did that to the church too. Yeah. They won't let us be tax exempt, even though we are. It's like you got to be on this list. Well, who puts you on the list? Well, we don't know, but it's not on the list. <laughs> they got to go around in circles there. I just thought like, because we're across the border. Yeah, they wanted us to fill out the paperwork for non-exempt and the South Dakota site, and when we did that, they said, well, you can't do that because you're not in South Dakota. So, <laughs> see, it's a, it's a circle. <laughs> uh, everybody guessing what state law says. So, it, yeah, I know it's possible because it still works for, school, for a while, so I can still walk in and charge tax free. But I just gotta get, like I said, we just got to get the right paper. Like sure. Yep. Okay. So, so which Miller Associate for five hundred fifty nine dollars? That was the rest of the con, the very first billing contract that they had put out. That we've only paid them a total of three or some thousand, whatever. So at this point, when that gets paid, then Miller's going to be putting another bill until we decide what we're going to do. Is that correct? Well, we've decided what we're doing. I mean, they, they've got the contract. I mean, they, they're they're our engineer. So whatever where they go next with it, they'll they'll do the next billing cycle based on, you know. Did, well my question is, is, did they give us a, you know, we're going with the lagoon, no doubt. Either there or there. No, we are headed there. We decided yeah. that last meeting. Yeah. That, James made a motion to move nope. to the lagoon on the pots place and to start the process of exploring for the money. And they are working on that right now. That's what they're working at, is getting funding. We had to pick a site so they could start. Did, the you, did, you, did you see a, a final figure what Miller was going to put for our new price? No, because that's what they're working on right now. They were working on just the if we got funding is what I heard. Well, they're working the on funding had to be there before they could do anything, correct? Well, they got to know the price before they could I'm funding. talking to Jim. Well, Excuse me. We had to pick a site for them to start the funding. Without a site pick. No, we're, this site over here is not off the table yet. And, but it is as far as I'm concerned because he's never going to sign the paper. But we had to pick a site in order for him to start the table to get the fund. So we don't, do we have a, uh, some kind of a figure what this is going to be? A ballpark figure at least? I don't know if the, the very first 
first meeting. Yeah, the very first meeting we, we put together. We come in several times saying we said that three million dollars. Three and some change for that first yep. meeting. It keeps going up as long as we do that. Yeah. Well, we won't have a final price until they put their numbers together. We got through step one of 50 cents. Finding a piece of property. Now it's step two. I'll probably be 15 steps before we can see if I can Because the initial thing was what we asked for the USDA to grant was yeah. 2.3 million, 1.5 yeah. in loans, and then 800,000 for a grant. That's what he said the other day on the phone. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. But since then it's changed. Yeah. But that, I, yeah. And it's going to change. It's going to go up. It's going to change. And that was kind of back in that first. Right. No, right. It wasn't the one there. Yeah, I don't know if that was even. That wasn't that was even based on. on that was way back. Repair of that, right? Yeah, probably. Was that uh, that phone conversation that you and Jim and Bob were on? Uh, no. What that conversation was just over was just put together. You know, what's available. What's available out there for you? Where we're at. That's really. I mean, is that what you got on that phone? Phone call. What what is available? He says he wasn't one hundred percent sure what's available. He, he said you you're gonna wind up going through USDA no sure. matter what you do. So he was going to get a hold of Anthony Gunther, who is the local representative out of Norfolk. Right. And and we're up against the fiscal year at times. What's, what's left of 2022? And is there anything left of 22? And then we'll go into 23. So Miller put a get number together what this thing was going to cost. Because people are asking me, how much is this lagoon going to cost me? I have no idea because I've never seen anything from an engineer saying it's going to be this. There was approximate. The very first meeting was an approximate three. That approximate three yeah, meetings. But we're not, they're not going to know until we get until we get to step two, three. And they're not going to give us a number. Um, but right now, like Cheryl said, we had to pick a site so they could start the ball to get the funding. Without the funding, we can't build it. But we won't yeah. know a final cost probably for the cost for the whole lagoon is two point approximately two point six million. Is that what we're looking at? More like three million plus. Uh, it's pretty close to three. Yeah. But what that final cost will be? Like Cheryl said, why don't we wait? What is going to go up? The soil makes a difference in easements to the property. Landowner makes a difference. There's a lot of murder. The, the distance from here to the lagoon makes a difference. Right. Yep. And they're at that stage now that we pick the site where they can start nailing those numbers down and get us a, a more exact number. They're just starting that. I think actually that <laughs> um, they were talking about you know all the fighting, all that stuff just guy rushing. Sure. And I think that some of the stuff that we saw the other day, just like that, might be leveling off a little bit. So if, we, if that, if we can get in there, you know what always happens: up, level, up, level. <laughs> so um, I don't, I don't see it ever coming back. It's not going to well, go back hard, down. It's hard to say. Fuel prices are coming down, so that yep. will start coming down. Yep. That part of it, yeah. We'll see. You get more scrap iron. The like biggest thing that we're going to do is funding. <coughs> And that's the process we're in right now. And, and, and just to fill in there, what I have sent to Millers to work with is, um, you know, our two or three years of profit and loss from that utilities fund. We've got the, the uh, utilities, has the, the billings, has the serving, you know, how many people we serve, um, increase in households and stuff. They look at all that. The more money, the less money we have in the fund, actually the better to get the grants. Um, it's, we're cut, you're always kind of caught between the devil and the deep blue sea because the more money you get, have, the, the better they want to loan to you. But the less money you have, the better chance you have for the grants. So, um, and those grants are, see the fiscal year for the government is July, starts July, it's June, end of June, a lot of them. So, yeah, that so as this new money comes in, if we can get this time right and get in on some of the early money, we may be better off. Um, we have to trust the people at Mellers who know what they're doing on that and the U.
USDA representatives. The biggest issue that I, that as what they told us was, and I think that was in that phone conversation maybe because we talked about it briefly before, there is a mandate that says you have to do a request for proposal, which says you have to contact, you have to say, this is, we're gonna build this sewer, so anybody that wants to be in on this, it's open for you to come in and give us your proposal. We did that years ago. Um, when I first came onto the board, um, Tom and I, and Steve, were you on there then, Don? I don't think so. You hadn't come on yet, and then? Because I came up for Michael. Okay, later. Okay, and Michael must have been the other one then. And then Hillman was on there for a while, but I think that was later also. Yeah, but we, we had those, Charlie did those proposals. Remember, they put them out and they came in in big books. And um, when, when uh, Reed was here that night, I said, well, here's your proposal. <laughs> he said, you're right, because we have to prove that we put that out for proposals. So that was part of our proof. And we had the one from Kirk and Michael and I didn't find the one from Stockwell, but we had the name and we had the paperwork. And we had the original request for the proposal. So he felt like he had gold mine because the paperwork was still there. So he said, because otherwise they'd make us start over. And then you would have a big, long, drawn out thing. So hopefully, I've got not got the word that they've accepted that, but he was putting that together for us. Okay? So hopefully that's a move forward. Okay, so then I guess what we need is a probably a motion, a motion, motion to approve the claims. Claims. I'll make a motion to approve the claims. Okay. Um, second. I'll, I'll second. Second by Don. And we'll start with Bob. Yes. And Larry. Yes. And Don. Yes. And James. Yes. Okay. Um, is anybody here from economic development? There you Nothing. go. Nothing to do with your report. Planning and zoning. Um, it, later on in here, I'll just say it a couple of times, but the August 15th is a special public hearing for the rezoning. They're going to do one, and then the board will have to do another one later. I think they get through. And this is about, they've been talking to us about that, about rezoning from this, um, down here on north, so they kind of in the same that north side acre plus out by the school. The cemetery, nobody's here from that, but I met with um, I met with Bonda and somebody else on that recently, and um, they're getting everything pretty well identified. We're talking about um, that it would be nice to have some kind of a um, guide up there so that you know we can locate things. So they're kind of working on that. Uh, tree board, I'd like to, they, I'd ask Dale if they could come up with some suggestions for replacement of the trees that we lost in the park, and there's some really old ones that still need to come down. Um, so I think they're working on that. So, and, and that's gonna take me right into that next section. If you don't mind, let me go on with my part there that has, because I'd like to talk about those trees. Um, I think we, I, still have to talk with Ryan. He was going to come to, he called and said he wanted to come down and talk about some of that and he never made it down. Um, but if I remember right, we counted at least four that either came down because of the wind or had to be taken down because of the damage. The insurance was going to pay for those. So we kind of lucked out there. I think we identified four. I think there was two here and, and Two up on the hill, there were the behind Allen and Herm Arms on that hill, you know, there was, it was three up there. It looked like only one went down, but then if you went up and looked at it, the, it had landed on that other one and you could see the ground was raised and it was going over. So the only way they could come in was from the west and take that, that um, and all those lines and stuff there, so we said just take them all out of there so that they don't get those lines. So of the three that went down up there, two of them should qualify for insurance. Then we took two here. They were here recently, and um, 
you're kind of looking at taking the one that's right, you know, the one that's on the end where the limb come down and hit the electric wire, that's still a danger. And then there's one that could still come down on the basket. So I've asked them to give us some, and that they work so cheap we don't really need the estimate, but the two, for those two, and then trim up in between so that we clean up that whole west side and that's done. And then that, and then, and I don't know if they have the stumps. That, you know, that they may wait to grind those up with some others. But if we could get that cleaned up right away, um, and see, that's part of the plan for the, the getting the sidewalk from the shelter to the bathroom. So if we could get that all done before that happens, then that's all ready for that. You're not planning on doing anything before the car show. Right? No. Okay. No. no somebody else. No, I, th no I, that needs to come afterwards. Sure. But we, we would like to get it done before winter because sure. we'd like to get that, that sidewalk done too. Sure. Um, and that's waiting on economic development. I don't know to get to go ahead on that. So that's kind of on that. Um, I think, um, are you all on it? You would, had mentioned this before, uh, probably advertised the land for sale on the north side. Somebody's interested in that, right? Another one. So I've had two calls on that. We need to just advertise it, don't you think? Yep. I do. And, and in fact, I need to talk, you know, if we sell something in the middle of that 26, then we have to start talking about infrastructure. But those on the end, we need to see where, and both of them, I'm, uh, both of them, I've told, we will reserve the property that it takes to go to road end. That's why we bought So you're talking about where the old cement plant is and the one to the and east. And the one to the east. east of okay. and, and planning and zoning is planning the road to be at the east end of Rogers, which would come in and then connect to some streets that they would have planned for the residential part of that. So, okay, so we'll get that into an advertisement and then while we're advertising, we got rid of the sink. Um, the um, Coke machine, as much as we love the Coke machine, um, the gals came in playing pickleball and they said when they tried to put a quarter in, it was dumping money. <laughs> Every time you drop a quarter, you've got a bunch of money. <laughs> so we're picking up all the change. And we got the door open and said, well, we don't know how to get into that to so straighten that out. So. We wound up shutting it off because it runs most of the time. Do, you, do we want to try to get a hold of somebody that's antique enough to fix it? Or do we want to put it out and take sealed bids because Boomer should have that in his garage. Or we could give it to Boomer since it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to it. His, his, Boomer said, it's not me, it's Carla. She's got a coke machine. Coke. It's still when we lose more money I would agree. And if we really want a pop machine in here, let's get a newer style or something. Do we, do we, what's the pop machine in here? No, it, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. once, a, and it's cheap, so like the kids, if they come in, like a family thing or something, they might buy some, but it doesn't produce a lot. Walk down the steps. <laughs> do what? Walk down the steps. Yeah, yeah. My suggestion would be like that, put out for sealed bids. If nobody comes in, give it to them. Put it out for sealed bids. Is that okay? <laughs> because there's an, 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 an antique dealer might want it. I didn't. Yeah, I
um, see if Mary Ann could come down and do some measurement of uh, what they've got in mind. Um, okay, so then the last thing, and I, th th this is, um, maybe we could put this into the street thing either way. Um, so I'm going to just throw it in here because we're going right on into that anyway. Um, and then you can think about this. There's three things that our street superintendent is supposed to help us. There are three things that we have to do at the state. One is a lane mile report, which says there's how many lanes of streets and or highways or roads or whatever you call it. Doesn't matter if they're gravel, um, you know, highway or whatever they are. And a lane is wide enough to get a car through. So this is a two lane road. So the first thing that goes in is a lane mile report. So that's what part of what they base on money. The next thing that goes in is the one to six plan. And um, that's about fixing them. And then there's the annual certification that says um, that we have a street superintendent and that helps us get that thousand dollars to pay them. And that's, that's what they charge us. So, um, so there's those three reports. Well, Steve called me a while back and said, um, and, and um, you might look at these two go with that other thing, that this one. Steve sent this out and said, I'm sending this out because that marks kind of what we talked about. And I said, well, so I wasn't following him very well. But then, then he sent these, and if you take a look at these, um, these are the one and six. So there's quite a bit of work on that, on the, the one year and then the six year has a whole bunch of them. And then the day he called me, he said this one. And this has just one all by itself and he recommended that we do just normal maintenance. Well, that makes sense because the year is over anyway. So um, so then in the next year, the, then there would only be that major one. and. Um, that's, um, so I said, so then he marked it on there and then he's got this mark. So he said, well, I said, well, we didn't get the lane mile report that I know of. Did you get it? No, I didn't get it. He said, that has to go to your clerk. I said, okay, so we've had in and out of here. So no, that has to go to Arlene. Well, Arlene, so then he called him. He said, Arlene's not registered. Arlene and I said, yeah, she's been doing it for two, three years now. I don't know why she wouldn't be registered. So right after they told us she wasn't registered, they sent the next report out to her as a registered clerk. So something's going on at the state. <laughs> so I have to get a hold of Steve again to find out if we need, or I'll just, the people who sent this out may just call them and see what's going on with it. I do want you to note, though, that I, and we'll, I'll back off and let, Chief Carter have the floor for his part of this <coughs> thing. But I decided to do this at this point because I'm recommending that we reconsider the work that was proposed by um, H and H is it? H and L. H and L that would do those streets because for $127,000 we use some of the money that we need to use. We have six to eight blocks of work done. I went to Cool Ridge the other day and those streets look really nice. They did two blocks of Main Street um, and they're, they're just nice. Um, I talked to one of the guys that used to be on the board and he said, you know, we pick the streets. And I said, does he just come in and decide <coughs> that we pick the streets and then he comes in every year and so forth and whatever. Um, I'm all for engineers, but I'm, you know, when something needs engineered, but when you have someone with 30 and 40 years experience to fixing something, and um, they, they know what they're doing, and you pay the engineer half of what you're paying them to come up with an idea that they already know, um, <coughs> I think it's a waste of money, but that's, that's me. So, with that in mind, um, my suggestion is let's get him in here because I talked to him the other day and he'll still come. 
we could get some of that done. The guys can go ahead and fill potholes and then fill in potholes where they can. But that would give us some, some nice streets. And then, and one of the reasons I picked those, because it's not Main Street, it's like, it's not that kind of street. So if we go down there on that off street, if he can make those look, if he can make those work, where they come high in the middle and so forth, and those bad intersections, if he can get that done, we got a gold mine. So, just a thought. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there. Um, I think I've covered all that I wanted to. And I'm gonna, uh, uh, Chief Carter, did you have something? Oh. Yeah, there's one other thing. The pickup has the air conditioners out. White one or the blue one? The, the white one, the good one. The, we got an um, estimate from uh, Pearson <coughs> that Hardington was 900 to 950, and from Michael's 1400. So there's those two bits. So you think about that for a little bit, and then we can come back to that at the end if you want to. If you want to fix it, if you want to trade pickups, if you oh, want to do what? How many miles are on that pickup? We don't need to trade it. I don't remember. 80, 80 something. It's less than 90. But not far from 90. <coughs> Everything. And we just put the compressors it. out of it or what? Or is this the, leaking? The condenser is out of it. The part that goes in front of the radiator, that's leaking. How many miles did it have on when you bought it? Mm, I don't, I'd have to look that up. I don't remember. We put approximately 15,000 miles on it, if my memory serves me right. 15 to 16,000. A year. 2015. A year. A year. Oh, well, a year. Oh, a year. No, oh, no, no, no. no. The, oh, I thought you asked what year the no, pickup no. was. No, no, you put that many years. Oh, no, no, no oh. that's, that, we got that's that. total miles since we purchased That's oh. probably three years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Probably five, six thousand a year. Yeah, it's, it's around, yeah, six, it's a, I think it's around six a year average. So it's different. So uh, I know a lot of smaller towns 
do accommodation of a police officer plus the ordinance officer. Well, if I'm chasing a dog, that's one thing. If the dog leaves the property. But that does have its, legally, it, it does has, have its limitations. And then your city attorney can explain that. So I'm, I'm kind of limited in what I can do. But if I see the violations on the street, the junk and abandoned vehicles, I, I can write a citation. If I see like these violations, I see them from the street, I can send a letter, give them time to fix it. If they don't, then the city attorney can issue a citation. And if they don't pay it, then you know it, it can go to court. So that's what it is. If we can want to keep the city looking as good as it looks right now, uh, but but it isn't bad. <coughs> what we do is that if people have prescription drugs, they can turn them into us, and we'll eventually take them to a pharmacy to uh, get get that done. There was a citizen assist for fuel exhaustion. Uh, the uh, St. Rose has a Good Samaritan Fund. They ask us if we can take that over because when school starts, they don't want people coming to them. They get the students over there, they're not going to go to ask for help. They run out of gas, we need some food or something. And it's usually done by law enforcement agencies in small departments, uh, in smaller communities because if a person is just trying to hustle money or commit a fraud, they're less likely to come and ask us for the help or gas or whatever if it's, if it's not real. And then only the other thing is that our suspicious activity has gone up just a little bit just because of the other time of year when that happens. So the, the latest one is that you know, there was a camera found in the, in the motel room and somebody's been watching people as they go into the motel. So I, I went and got that. I did contact the person who was responsible. I was able to find out who was responsible and there's an investigation right now. And I'm gonna work with, with NSP to get that all resolved. But I'll put out the word to people that if they go in a room, they need to really look at the room that they're not hitting cameras. And that camera was no bigger than the end of this pen. So and then the room? Yes. They, they had a pen to the curtain inside of a panel pointed towards the bed on the alligator truck. Okay. Yeah. And remote control. Yeah, and then that camera was in there from July <coughs> the 19th all the way to the 29th. But I contacted all the people that were in the room to let them know that if somebody call them to try to black them or, or say something or threaten them with something that lets them know because we already know about it so it's not like they have to but we don't know who's put the camera there. I do. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the camera. I've been doing this 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 he says there's a new sheriff in town. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, what it would say about having more than one family living in a single dwelling house? Well do you have an ordinance on it though? See, because, because there's, 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 there's some state law, but what will prevail over that is you have a local ordinance. And so, it, it, you know, if you have an ordinance that's more restrictive than what the state has, but not more lenient, whatever your city ordinance says, whatever the city attorney writes, that, that's what governs. And if you don't, you know, if, if, if a family is living in a one or two bedroom house, but, you know, it's a bunch of them in there, and that causes issues, you know, with trash or whatever, noise, whatever, you can write an ordinance. I'm talking to different with. families living in one house. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. You know, you, you, okay. you have multiple families living in house. But in order for me to enforce it, there has to be an ordinance for different families living in one house. There has to be some type of written violation. And then the only other thing is that uh, I have. But as far as the, the applicants for the SRO, the school resource officer, I put out some information what that is, is I think some people have a misunderstanding about what that is. A school resource officer is not because the kids are bad. The school resource officer is there because that person provides a mentorship and other things for kids to become more uh, friendly with law enforcement. And also it's a way to recruit you know, kids later on down in the years that because they knew a law enforcement officer. There has been some interest, but there were act there has been actually no applicants as of this day. But when I was here last time, I spoke about the vehicles, and we can probably get some from DRMO and from other places for between the three fifty and the seven hundred thousand dollars. But now that vehicles are so expensive, I mean everybody's got this crazy amount that they want for vehicles. That's really no longer applicable at that price. Even some of the vehicles that I found, they had, you know. 80, up to some over 100,000 miles of people still <coughs> wanting, you know, several thousand dollars from. So I contacted the Nebraska Enterprise Fund 
and they agreed that, you know, I explained to them where our situation was, so they're going to let us know this week, but they have pre-approved us to get $25,000 for a vehicle. So they'll pay $25,000 for one vehicle, and until we get some other funding through, we just have to show that we apply for it. You know, that's how they can help us. And then I asked them for some more money, the 55000 to pay that school resource officer because we missed that grant window initially, so it's a little tougher to, to get that money down. But uh, uh, the Crime Commission and PSAP is meeting this week, so Don Art contacted me last week and said that they'll meet this week on that funding. But the Nebraska Enterprise Fund also said that they would be very interested in paying that $55,000 for our school resource officer for the first year. So they're going to let me know this week if that will get funded here before the end of this month in August for the $55,000 for the SRO and for the $25,000. So you got this, I'll call it uh, the police officer that's going to be in the school, correct? Right. What do they do in the three months if you don't have school? They are a street officer. They're, 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 because they are a regularly commissioned street officer. The only difference is they're just assigned to the school. When they're not in school on the weekends, because that person will be working opposite of me on weekends, so we'll rotate. So when I'm not working, they're working. If, if I'm off or if I leave town, they're working. Um, if school is out during the summertime, they are a crossing police officer driving around patrolling. So you're looking at yourself and two other officers, correct? Well, I'm looking at myself and one officer now, school resource officer, but eventually, you know, if, if that funding comes in, we will have funding for the officer. Have you talked to the, the schools and asked them what their thoughts on having an officer out there? Not, not all of them. I, I, I talked to the superintendent briefly, and I talked to the principal briefly. They thought that it was a great idea, but we've had no in-depth conversation. I went to St. Rose, and I talked with uh, Father Andy, and I talked to the pastor who was there last week. Also, he came down, and I talked to the administrator and the principal that's over there. They think that it's a good idea as well. They want a little more information about it, uh, but I printed that out. But I still have to get to the school. Now that school is, is in, I went to talk to the superintendent and the principal last week, but they were at some kind of conference. They were gone all week. So I will get with them here sooner than later and talk with them, talk with them about the school resource. Because the school resource officer is not intended to be someone because things are bad. It's to prevent bad things from happening. You know, you have a person there that provides them into that you know, kids tell police things when they feel that there's a report. It, it can be very, very positive. And then there's scholarship programs that can come to that SRO program. There's other funding that can come because we have an SRO in the school. It can be very, very positive. So one, and this is one of the reasons that I want to do it because it kills that negative stereotype. It's a stereotype to have an SRO in a school is a bad thing because bad things go on in the school. That is not true. So how do you do that? How do they do that when they got three different locations for three schools? Well, he'll he'll, he'll rotate. You know, so, so the so the so the SRO will talk to the school administrators, and because one of the things that the SRO he'll do a dare program, and the dare program is pretty much geared for the elementary school kids. So he'll get our dare program back up. We should have a dare program anyway. Uh, <coughs> most of the things that that I hear and how I get ear on what's going on, and and because in my office right now I have uh, bombs, marijuana grinders. Marijuana residue, marijuana pipes. I've got vapes. I've got uh, other little things that kids have brought me in my office. In the last week, right now, that was a teenager that gave me that stuff. See, an adult hasn't given me a thing. I would look. See, I don't want to that. Teenagers are giving me that stuff, not adults. Now, the adults call about suspicious activity, but the ones that come forth and say, hey, look at what I found. But guess where I got this from? The teenagers, and that's what I want. And that comes from building rapport where I young. They, they have to know that they can trust you. Did you know? That's great. So, thank you. Thank you. That's how you do it. Cool. Just before we can put in the paper on this side. Can that go to the community? 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Police reports and other communities. Right. So, if you'd like to do that, I'm happy to do it. That's okay, with John. Okay, yeah, yeah, thank you. That's <laughs> what Knox County does that. Right. Um, Pat used to make it before. I don't know that it ever got published, but he did it before. Um, okay, so thank you. Um, and the unfinished business, the sewers on there, but we're going to skip that because it's again down below. Um, I need to tell you too that um, our lawyer will be here. He said he'd be here, but he's got a meeting first, so he'd be late. So he said if we put that last, so anything he needs to be, and he needs to be here for that. So um, let's see what else we need to do. Um, on the, the, there's that parks equipment. Uh, Patrick had talked to you at one time about the possibility of getting trailer to haul those mowers. Um, either way that wherever that lagoon goes, you're, we're going to get mowers to it and it's easier to haul them than it is to, to um, road them that far probably. Mm -hmm. Besides any of the other stuff, and our trailer is about shot. Our trailer is shot. Kind of but that, the, as far as I know, that's still there, wasn't it? Nine grand, was it? The one trailer that was a tilt bed was 9200 and that was large enough to haul our skid loader as well. If we would need to do some dirt work out there with a skid loader. There is a cheaper trailer I found down in Osmond for 5,500 that would be heavy enough to haul two lawnmowers. It, it was in the bought $5,500 range, but it would not be heavy enough to transport a skid loader. So some options. I, I didn't look into it anymore. Uh, but Yankton Trailers a week ago did still have that tilt bed trailer for 9200 <clears throat> And our, just the trailer that we do have, we can barely get our mowers on it, just barely. And the, the mainframe needs some welding, and the heat in the last two weeks has uh, uh, caused one of the tires to go bad. And I have not had a chance to see if we can get used tires to put on it. I'm kind of waiting for to see what you guys would like to do for this evening. Um, so if that trailer can hold one more. And, and if it's wet, we can't load the mowers at all. The, the, there's not enough traction to get the, if they're in the trailer is so tight, there's no room for air. Well, it seems to me like it, you know, we're a little better off to, to have a little more and it's just bare like that. And, and that's not a bad price it's worth it from what we looked around. That's for, for the amenities that it has. Do you see an emotion? You got or just say, yeah. If we get more than, if, if we're having somebody give us a price, do we have two bids or are we just going to go with one guy? He's already looked at at least two, two bids right now. Right. Mm -hmm. so we've we got, we got to see the estimate. First, if we're going to do before we do anything. You, don't have you, you already, you already have them. Yeah, they've, from, they've, they've been. You've gotten them in the past meetings. It's yeah. not there tonight, but you've had you, that information was presented to you in past meetings. When were we first talking about mowers? <coughs> when we first got the mowers, we presented that. Yeah, we'll take a motion. I'm going to make a motion to get the big trailer. We we need a trailer. We can't ride this mower to the cemetery back and forth. To is a small cost effective. A is it, what the how heavy is that trailer? Is it heavier than what the capacity of the pickup is? I mean, are we predestined that hey, with being on a trailer that massive, is our pickup being going to be able to handle it? Can they have time to pull that skid loader? Yes. You, would, you, you couldn't load the skid loader on the front of the trailer, but if you if you load the, you get the tongue weight ratio right over the axles, it'll pull it. And, and we're not talking going from here to, to Sea City either. We're, you know, we're just talking five miles potentially. And and if we do something different with a pickup, I would definitely look into a heavier pickup at that point. But the pickup we have would add <coughs> to move our mowers. Yeah. And, 
and, and occasionally if we would have to take a skid loader somewhere, we have the chance to get we, we would be able to have that opportunity to do it. And then this road mix that we're we're buying, we can get two pallets on a truck without having to restack the pallets with the tailgate off. This trailer would allow us if we wanted to buy three or four pallets at a time, we would be able to haul multiple uh, pallets on this trailer and still get them off with a forklift. Any buying a trailer in the long run? Saves us money. Makes us more efficient. I'm gonna make the motion to buy the from, uh, Yankton trailer, right? Yankton, Yankton Trailers has the tilt bed. Okay. Um, and it's in that whatever night you know, time to get everything in there. We're right in there, 92, whatever. We will give it that. Okay, a motion by James. I'll second. Um, second by Don to buy the tail fed trailer at Yankton Trailers. Um, where was my vote? Okay, let's start with Larry. No. Don? Yes. Um, James? Yes. And Okay, then in that same thing, we talked about the pickup a little bit. Is there anything else? Did you, you want a decision on whether to fix the air or what to do there? This weather out here is pretty hard on our guys not to have air conditioning. I'll sleep in. I'm believing we should prepare the air conditioning. Yeah. She'll go to Paris and right there. Well, like five hundred dollars cheaper. Yeah. All right. That's yeah, what I'll, we've been I'll doing. Make, I'll make sure there's the please? labor and the material for that. Price. Would you please? Just because it just seems seems a little off. Yeah, but but when I talked to them, I was under the understanding that was labor and material. Okay, double check. So, so what we have is that. double check. Go ahead and do the cheapest when you approve the bill when it comes. So well, did you have a written document from Pearson or just sells a verbal on the It's board? just a verbal from okay. both shops. Can we, I want to make sure we're doing the apples to apples here. You do, do the motion <coughs> to, to get, the, the, get the written, fix it, yeah. and go with the cheapest one. Or get it, because we don't want to wait a month. No, I don't want to wait a month. I don't want to wait a, a day. But if it's my concern is that it might fifty dollars more than right. right. Okay, so that says you know we'd have to sure. come up with a number. Sure. Well, let's get some numbers. We can get it out to all of you in an email yeah. And, yeah. and and tell you what we. I'll think. make a motion to fix the air conditioning after we see the price, the price, the hard price. Okay. Okay. Yep, that's fine. You guys make sure they're doing the same. So yeah, I wanted to see. Same we'll be able stuff has got to get done. Yeah. Nobody's added or subtracting. Correct. Them. We'll have them put everything in the pricing. You know, get it in the hard copy and give it to us, please. Make sense. I'll second that one. Okay, motion by James, seconded by Bob. So we're going to start with Don. Yes. James. Yes. Bob. Yes. And Larry. Yes. And then on the end of that little load, see that thing there? There's that sprayer. If we, if the guys have an old broken down sprayer, if I understand that they've made do with, and it's not the thing that you can get a decent one that will load on to something and they can do parks and they can do cracks in the sidewalk and they can be 10 times more effective. And that's what they tried to sell me on anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to talk to them about that? Yeah, we have a, a sprayer that's a tow behind. It's basically basic like a big farm unit, but all these miniatures given to us by the golf course. The pump locks up on it so uh, I know Bob and James have seen it in the top shed. Uh, it's got a gas engine and a pump on it, and it locks up. So my proposal would be, if we want to save money, we would need to buy a $150 pump from Bongars, and we'd have to repair it and make sure the, the one tire that's flat and doesn't turn is operable, and we can salvage that. I, I did happen to look at Baumgart's this last weekend when I was there, and for that $900 range, we could buy something new, set up electrically, in about that 
same capacity to, to just to give you some information. That's a 15 or 30 gallon or what it do? It's actually bigger than that. I don't remember. It's, I can't remember how many gallons they were, but it was, it was, it was, it was, it was larger than 50 gallons. I want to say there were 60 or 70. I'm just going to say, well, Bob and I went through the maintenance building. I was very appalled about some of the equipment that we have, that we're using. Yep. I'm tired. I mean, this car shouldn't be spending a dollar to save a dime. And that's what we've been doing for a long, long time. Uh, Is it something that's worth investigating again? We can get a paper yep. bid yep. on what we have. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I'm far, all for getting the, getting the right equipment. Uh, you can get the and do you, I would jump on down then to that other one, and do you want him to look at tools and equipment well, for the shop and make a list of what? Well, we talked to him about that. He should not be using his own tools. Nope, we know that. So we talked to Pat about getting a list of the things he and has And he's up got here. the list. But he needs to take home, and we need to invest in that. Do you want to set a price? investment that list or do you want to you know this it's kind of hard to get anything done if you bring each item in here at a different time you know give us a list of what he's using that's his that he shouldn't be using and what it would cost to get new well, <coughs> got, yeah i mean it's insured for what 50 grand yes years? what's that He's estimated that we're using fifty thousand dollars worth of his tools that's on our insurance. That's just, that's just, no other way but what I'm saying is, you know, how can can we just start buying buying a list of? I think we have to approve all that, though, wouldn't we? We can, but we can we can bring those to you to the sure. truth So what kind of tools are we looking at? Just mechanic tools, specialized tools? Right, right now I've got a garage creeper, jack stands. High lift jack, a chop saw, a, a wire feed welder. Mm, most of what welding gloves, helmet, that stuff is mostly mine. And then I've got my tools. My uh, my mechanic tool set is there. Uh, I, there's a lot of stuff in there. I got a list of what that is. I understand you can buy. $100,000 worth of tools, we still have to get some more. But, you know, if we can get by through the basics, because every year, Baumgars has a big sale at that farm show, and every farmer goes and buys tools because it's on sale. Well, you know, I'm, I'm asking what I can do. What you guys want me to do is, uh, I mean, there's that, that welder. <laughs> I think I've used it for my own personal use five minutes and I put five rolls of wire through it since I bought it and it went from the store right into the shop. So on that one, I would ask the board if I could buy a new welder and the welder itself is a $800 if I, I'd have to compare model numbers, but if I got the right one, it was a $800 welder off the shelf at Baumgart's because I bought it and, and it hasn't done any welding for me. So if we could, but, 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 the, but, but, I, but a garage creeper and jack stands, you know, that stuff that we use. Can we let's pre volunteer to get a working committee to sit down and look at the list and then present then to the rest of the council what we're being, because I'm, I'm gonna say Mr. Pice obviously is a construction expert. I've been turning wrenches and working on cars since I was able to crawl. So the two of us, and I'm not speaking for Mr. Pice, but we can sit down as a working committee and work with Patrick and go through the list. And and prioritize things so we can come up with some estimated costs so we can give us a hard copy yeah. of the numbers of what the things are priority. Can you put that together, give us a list of what it would cost to replace them? Uh, yeah, and, and, I'm, and I'm not asking the board to replace what I have. No, it, but I'm trying to come up, I've started a list of, of what I think this we would help the city to have. Yeah, and like, I, like, I agree with Larry, I know they have the big farm show and you can get we could get, we gotta do some shopping. We yeah, get everybody the list and then look everything at Everything is sky rocking like the police chief said, and everything is up there now. Yeah, there's, well, let's expedite this. There's, there's, there's no also the tools that are out of shop. There probably is a liability problem. There is nothing to use it. Yes. Yeah, one of them. 
pass tools and then he gets hurt by it. That's why we put them on insurance. They are, that, that's, that's on our insurance, our coverage. Our there bank is bank. A, a Nebraska website that we bought the gravel truck from that has toolboxes and tools, but it takes a trip to Lincoln. I, I, I haven't called them. I could probably call them and try and nail them down. They have toolboxes sometimes for $250 that are full but you don't know what you're getting. So it would take somebody to go down there and take a look at what they have available to see how much for that 250 that we could, uh, you know, replace. Uh, the boxes sometimes the boxes are empty. <laughs> with and the, and they've the, got boxes of wrenches where we could put together a wrench set for with like two dollars, five dollars a, a ranch. You know, entertain Mr. Step and the kinds of give us some guidance on. He does a lot of mechanic stuff. He uses a lot of different tools. Well, maybe, maybe give him a shot to give us a, an idea of what we what's good and what's not good. Well, Patrick is also very well versed in his tools. I've been at this for sixty years, and right now you can go across the street. You can go to John here in Yankton. And you can buy a toolbox that fits in the back of a pickup. We have one out at the shop that we have a, a pallet underneath of it, and it's got about every tool in it that you need to do the average thing, even out in the country. Now, if you bought something like that, you could use it up there. If you all once needed it, go to your sewer plant. You could load it up and go there. What do they uh, cost you? Know, I don't know, but you can ask them. They got my boy Bobby's got one in his pickup, and it gets loaded probably three times a week. With the pallet before it goes in back in and goes out the country. Let's let's start, <coughs> let's start with the list. Sure. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Let's start with see what we're at. Right. We can tell me what we're at. Yeah. We're, we're just going to run. Okay. And he's okay. already got started. Okay. Like that. Nope. But he can mind yep. you know, keep let's at it. Let's okay. get it done. Okay. okay. So I'm going to take out, right now, I think we're at the talk about the sewer, and we've been waiting just for you. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're just finished up the rest of it. But before we go there, we have three people here that need to take the oath of um, the, 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 oath of the city. So I'm going to ask the Andersons to come up, and Monique's going to be here, and, and they're going to read the oath of office together, or whatever they want to do it. And for those of you who, anybody here who does, are not familiar with these people, um, the Andersons have been here for a while, so most of you probably know them. Um, Unique is our chief of police's wife, and she's going to be our new clerk, slash treasurer, whatever. Um, and uh, so we're looking forward to this. Okay? Go for it. Yeah, go, yeah. <coughs> you can search your name and say.
Will came through and he said, hmm, glad to see you're on the stick there, making it look like you're doing something when you're not. <laughs> you gotta remember, know that he was then one of Will's first classes. He helped build the house out there. First class in that class. <laughs> so he got, he got welcomed royally by a little bit of razzing looking like he's busy. I thought it was kind of cute. He does stay busy. I'm going to take just a minute and say that I am impressed with all three of these people. Unique came in today and started organizing. She's interested. She's on the stick. Um, Shelly is always willing to do anything we ask her to. And uh, Dustin is just right there. Right? So Patrick, as you know, does a <coughs> job. Happy with our new officer. We're gonna mess Arlene as she goes in and out, but she'll be back before two before we know it. Um, so we're on our way. And appreciate each and every one of you. Um, okay, so the next step in the sewer, basically. We talked just briefly about this, about the fact that um, that the next step is is kind of in progress because we had to call Reed Miller called the conference call with um, USDA and Bob and James and I were on, on, on that phone and basically that's what they're working on now getting by. Um, Dale's in the audience. Um, he came in today, called me last night and, said, and came in today and I, I, I don't know where you're at at this point but um, That second option that we have is your property, and did you, where were you with that day, or did you go get it um, notarized, or what did you do? Okay, I had a concern on the exercise of the purchase option. At the planning time of the year 2023-2024, the city did not exercise the purchase option. Can the construction of the Lagoon, Lagoon project begin while the crop is in the field? If so, who pays for the crop if it is destroyed? Well, I can answer that question for you. Uh, as I as I mentioned before, you know, obviously the city has to be making a decision, in my opinion, in the next 30 to 60 days max as to which piece of property that they're going to choose because of this construction timetable that the state of Nebraska has placed upon them. So from the standpoint of worrying about 23 or 24, uh, to me that's somewhat of a moot question, but it's, you know, since you've asked the question, you know, the uh, contract that was sent to your attorney to have them review section uh, paragraph 11 uh, and uh, subsection B specifically says buyer will reimburse the seller for any damage that it caused during the investigation of the lagoon site, drilling of any test holes or any other activity directly or indirectly related to the construction of the lagoons by the buyer. And I think that covers that. So, you know, I mean, obviously if they buy the property, you know, it's a moot question. I think it's going to be a moot question anyway, just because I don't think the city can wait until 23, you know, 23, 24. But they have to have the construction part of it going around by December 1st. And so uh, they've got to make a decision that short period of time. I mean, I, I understand you don't know whether funding will be available by then or not. Is it, to my um, understanding, or is it? I don't think it's a matter because of... my question is, do you plant that crop or not? I mean, will there be a verbal or written notice ahead of time well, prior to the planting season? And what if that crop is planted? Who's responsible for it? Because what if they exercise the option in June and that crop is in the field? Then how do we handle that? and they decide they're going to do construction two months later and the crop is still standing in the field. I think you'd handle it the same way you do any other crop uh, situation with crop insurance. You make a determination of what the value is. They do that all the time, whether it's 
wind, hail, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. And, and you know, the timetable that the state of Nebraska gave the city is not based upon whether they get funding or not. I mean, so if you think that that's a precondition or contingency, <coughs> uh, they have a timetable that they got to do this, 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 and this. And so they're on a short leash right now. And so, you know, uh, I think the contract is pretty clear as to, you know, they would have to be responsible for any damages during those incidences that are specifically set forth out of subsection B in paragraph 11. There's no statute of limitations on that. We're responsible for whenever, if we ever were there, for whatever damage we do. Well, yeah, unless you buy the property. Right. I mean, if you don't so buy the property. It won't even go into 2023 or 2024. It's going to happen real short, real short. We're going to make a decision. If you sign it and let us contest holes, we <coughs> the property. If the soil looks good, then the board has to make a decision where they're going to go. That's the bottom line right there. Because it ain't going to happen. We ain't going to sit on this until May of 2023, and you've got to sit there and think about planting. We're going to have this all pretty well done long before that. Well, you've got to have, as you've checked, you know, the test holes drilled. You've got to and have that may that. take seven to ten days if they, they can do it quickly. They, they so then you're already in the middle of August. Yep. And then the next board meeting, you guys have got to pull the trigger, in my opinion. So, I mean, I don't see this as a thing where 23, 24. Yeah, going to draw a picture to us. If you guys haven't made a decision by then, <laughs> it's not going to be good. No. Yeah. It's not going to be good. So, <coughs> so either we're going to know for a very long time. We, we have to know if you're going to sign it because then we can move on. <coughs> If you don't sign it, then they really have one option left. I mean, you know, and I'm not trying to force you, that you're going through into making this, you know, having to do something. I'm just telling the board as it is. You don't have time. You either sign it or you don't sign it. That's, that's it, right? We'll cover. We'll cover anything that we damage on your on your premises while we're doing it. Uh, like you said, crop insurance works the same way. Hail, wind, anything. But we'll have to pay for what. We damage on your property. Okay.
quite frankly, I'm assuming that if all the soil samples and everything goes well out here, they won't even be sampling. But that's our second option. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've got one that's uh, the blank day of August. So we don't have no other. You're going, you can still do an option without an order. You okay. can. Mm -hmm. Just as you have to have a signed contract. I always put one on there just hopefully that we had somebody, but if not, I mean, I'm a notary in South Dakota, but not here. Okay. Are you wanting to sign it tonight, Dale, or not? You don't know yet? Here's, what we're, here's where we are. Yeah. If you sign it tonight, and everybody know, you know is in agreement, then the board can vote to accept that contract, am I right? Yes. And then I can go ahead and sign it. You don't have to have it. But if you want more time to think about it, then you're going to have to get it signed and notarized, bring it in, and then we'll have to have another meeting. There's no hurry as long as we're working out there. But if you want that as a second option, you're going to have to make that decision. And to get the ground samples, we have to have your signature on paper. <clears throat> yeah, we probably won't do those if we're, until we get those together. more time to think, man, you do it. Because you don't want to ever feel like that you got talked into something you didn't want to do. It's the right guy. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I mean, I just say this, Mr. Gunther. Nothing's going to change on this agreement, okay? So, I mean, there isn't going to be any words changed. We've changed how many times? Four or five times. And a waste of time to the council, quite frankly, to have a special meeting when nothing's going to change. So, you know, if you don't want to sign it, nobody's nobody's feeling bad about that, okay? I mean, they're not going to hold it against you. But, you know, this is what the second meeting we've had on this thing. And, uh, uh, you know, you've had your attorney look at it, and, uh, you know, we've, we've conversed with that. And so, uh, you know, from the board standpoint, you know, I guess I would encourage you to if he isn't going to sign it, then you got to go on to the other alternative because you just, I just don't think you got the time. I mean, we don't. You know, you got to, you got to drill those holes, We're even if there. he does sign it, and you're, you're running on a tight, tight rope. We're right, right now. Now. We're going to get the results of the set. Then you got to get the results of the set. So you're already looking into September. I don't know. So. Um, well, and I feel for the congregation who should spend the money to get soil samples unless that's out there it turned out. Well, that's another day for another discussion. Well, I mean, that's what yeah. the vote was. So, if, if you're not willing to do that, then we might all go home. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, before it does, I'd like to uh, hire H and L to do the street. I'll oh, make, okay. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Hire. Don makes a motion to hire H now to come back and do that street bus. Okay. Do we have a second? Oh, oh wait a minute. Here. Okay. What what are they going to do? From the from the elevator to Chad Potts' house, all of Wyoming I, Street. I, I understand where they're going. Okay. What I'm asking is what process.
process are they going to do on our roads? Are they going to take some down or are they just putting it over the top? They're going to mail where they need to mail. The Wyoming Street is so bad they don't need to mail. There's nothing left to mail. Can, can, we, can we have that gentleman come to a board meeting? We need to get him going. Me, we need to get it going or we're going to be out of time. Well, <coughs> I, I, I can have him come up and talk to you if that makes you feel better. The contract reads he will mill three inches at the curb, up to an inch at eight foot. That's the width of his machine. He will fix any bad spots that need milled and filled before he would lay any hot mix over that. So the, the curb would be three inches, eight feet in it would be one inch of hot mix. He would come in and he, because the, he looked at the roads and he said, the centers of the roads are good and they're solid. So if, if we milled out the poor uh, areas, which is on the sides, I would fill that with that material from three inches to an inch. And then you would need to seal that and he has the new polymers that you put the rock into. It's not the old MC800 like what we've been using on the streets. And the key does not do it once, he does it twice. And that's what his contract reads. So that's what he would be doing the one thing, to answer your question. As the board members, we have not seen the contract of how he's gonna do it from him. This is all talk over the phone. The next thing is, what are we going to do with Second Street? We're not going to put tar on Second Street. I hope the board members are going to have to think about this. This one right here. This one right here. You know, we had a bit of putting concrete back in there, cutting out what we have to, and it just seems to die because we need to get it done. We got the money. We got to do it, and that's part of the street right there. We keep waiting and waiting. We're going to wait until next winter, next spring. We're going to have to figure that out. Part of it. his, his contract, his bid includes that. What's he going to do? Pour concrete? I don't want to see. I don't want to see asphalt poured over concrete. I really I don't. don't. We're, not, we're not talking about the street at all. Clearly. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. He's got. He's got a seal. How come we don't have a copy? Yeah, this we do have a copy. It's been in the past months. We shaved that off. And put you do have a copy. I've had If you start bringing that out, you look in your packet, it's in your packet that you've got in the back. And then you can talk about that again. Like, but that it makes no sense. I'll take it all off because there's nothing wrong with everybody talks about it. I thought it was a speaking part of it. Why? I didn't know that you went to it. I'm not going to vote for putting asphalt over the concrete. Nobody's putting asphalt over that. You just told me they were. No, I did not. I said he was there to fix it. I didn't say he was going to put asphalt over it. You fix it for concrete. Well, there's, there's an in-between there where you actually cut the, the broken, jagged edges of the concrete and fill that with the polymer that holds that and then put the patchwork inside that you don't have to cut everything out and take the rebar and how everything much else. Concrete, how much concrete have you poured, Cheryl? How many roads have you built, there? <laughs> I put a lot of sidewalks and dire pieces. That's not a street. I have a good I never, and I never said I did. Jim, have you seen it? I don't know if I don't, I don't see the second street part of this. And that's just maybe something. I don't know. It says, I don't see it on It's all right with me if he doesn't touch second street. That's fine. But but you leaving that open for the winter is not a good idea. And he wouldn't be doing anything to keep any water in the ice. And it wouldn't be anything that if they decided to cut it out. That price is sealed. I would like to talk to him. Have Mr. Doyle Stevens come. He pours a lot of drivers and a lot of streets. That's who I have to think about coming talking to the board. 
And I would like to have this agent on, but what do you think? Come in here and tell us the same thing. Let's leave Second Street out <clears throat> and move ahead with the streets to get, and we can judge from the job he does what we want to do from there. Would you adjust your motion, Don, to okay, do I'll, to I'll leave Second Street out? I'll make a motion to hire each and out to do all the streets that they want to do except for Second Street. Just the one that they got to talk about. That Harold Street, or not Harold, but Fifth Street. Fifth Street and what? And the repairs on some of the others. So, so guys, what are we going to do? I mean, we got manholes. Are we going to cut that down or are they going to keep adding on the top? <laughs> That's my question. Right? Yep, they done. They put concrete around the manhole. That was great. But now we're going to be, you know, are they just going to lay the top over the thing and put another sleeve on there? They haven't told us what they're going to do there yet. Well, yeah. Yeah. how wide is this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How wide is the city street? Six foot? Eight foot? It depends. 25 feet approximately. Okay, so if we're just going eight foot in each way, we'll never deal with the manhole anyway, right? Correct. The manholes are. The, these guys are professionals. They deal right. with the manhole. I mean, all we, the time. Like, we won't have an issue with the manhole. If we're going You're to not going to have an issue with the manhole. How are you going to do the train the manhole? You just don't do that part of it. Are you aware of what chip sealing? Is Larry? I can't hear you, Pat. Are you aware of what chip sealing process is? I I've got no hearing aids in chip sealing. Chip? Yeah, I don't know what chip sealing is. The process of no. chip sealing. But that that doesn't explain the manhole. He's worried about the manholes. I know. Okay. But so if he doesn't know what chip sealing is. Maybe you should educate us a little bit and tell us what it is and how it works. Maybe we need to maybe we need to know exactly how the process works. Chip sealing is spraying a coat of oil and impregnating gravel into it. Just like the So, the, so how do you get the how do you get the gravel and stuff in the existing asphalt? You don't put it in the existing asphalt. You spray a, a tack of oil on the surface and you spread gravel into it and you pack it in and that's the glue. It glues the rock to the surface. The new polymers have a work better than the old polymers. So the, Harry was going to he chips seals twice. So it's one layer of oil, a layer of gravel, pack in the gravel. Then he comes in and he sprays oil again, comes over with gravel, packs it in again, and every layer fills in imperfections. So, uh, so it's very thin. It's just if, so you, if you're putting three eighths chips or smaller, each layer is three eighths of an inch or less. So whatever your chips are, that's what you're going to raise the center. The outside, he's got a miller that's eight foot wide. He wants to mill down three inches at the curb because most of our curbs are very shallow. Garbage trucks can't, our, our surfaces can't handle heavy garbage trucks. Three inches of hot mix. In his 30 years of experience, it will hold a grab, uh, garbage truck. And eight feet in, it will only be one inch because the centers of our streets that he looked at just the ones that he looked at that are on that sheet are good enough that he feels that he's willing to put his name behind this and that we will have good streets for years to come. He said, if I didn't think this work would work, I wouldn't even suggest it to you. So the, the deal with the manholes is pretty mute because, I mean, it, it's no different than if we sprayed oil and put our gravel in. But they, he would suggest that we use quartz because quartz is harder, the red rock out of Sioux Falls, so it'll last longer. And the oil that he uses is the new stuff that has the plastics and stuff in it that hold better. So that, that would be the process. You'd have three inches of hot mix at the curb Eight feet in, you'd have one inch. 
from both curves in, and then he would come in and spray the two coats of oil and two coats of gravel. That's what he's talking about doing. In, in what's on that piece what, of paper. What about, what about when, you know, plenty streets and crossing, they go on in all of a sudden it's deficit like this. So what's he gonna fill that in and make it flat, otherwise that this chipping that you're talking about will follow exactly what's there. If, right? there, if there's a hole that needs to be milled and filled, he'll repair that before before he does that. Well, I'm not talking holes, I'm talking stretches of road <coughs> that's got to be out over the years. That'll mill out. Well, he's not gonna be milling the center. Those, those small imperfections aren't as bad as what you would think they are. And the rock chips and the oils fill those imperfections. The big thing is, I mean, if, if you want a flat, level, smooth floor, then don't vote for, if you want it perfect, don't vote for this. This isn't perfection. He's just trying to, he said, I want to do what you guys want from me for as cheap as possible, but, but still get your money's worth. Where, where his word is. So where's his outfit from? Je, uh, is it Genoa? Genea. Geneva. Geneva. So why wasn't, uh, we talked, you said we talked about this earlier, why wasn't that guy here presenting his case and we could have probably got started if we talked to the man <laughs> instead of that piece of paper that tells us what's going on. Somebody should have been here if you're going to sell something here. He you was here and board. he talked to us and Ooh. this was his proposal. The right. owner of the company was here to talk to Boomer and I and Cheryl, and we discussed this. We, we, we had them do a workup as, with a company that's from Iowa moving into Norfolk, and that information was all in a packet. It's all been presented to you months and months ago, and this is just, Cheryl, Cheryl is just bringing it up again as, as her I, idea for I this evening. I talked to him recently, and he said that he wanted to do it when he came to Cool Ridge so that he could move his equipment once, and we turned him down. Right. So I asked him if he would be willing to come up with just us to do it, or if he had other towns up here, and he said he would still come up, but it needs to be soon because winter's coming. Right. So the, the entire surface of the 25 foot wide speed will get armor coated twice for just twice. the repair That's period. correct. So how long are they telling us it's going to stay there? I, the, I can't hear. I can't hear both of you. Ask. I can't. I mean, All right. I'll wait till he gets done. Just, not just over the eight foot strips. The whole street will get. The armor. whole street will be armor. oiled armor and armor coated twice. And, and, he, and there's crack sealing in there as well. And he has a crack. It, it's not a tar based. It's a polymer based, and it stretches. So he says the cracks that are there that we don't mill out. I will seal those with that polymer first and the chip seal and oil will go over that. So that way we will be more years down the road before we have any cracks allowing moisture through the surface of our streets. Do they give how many years would have to go before we'd have to do anything to it? Uh, it doesn't have to be kept and sealed every two or three years. Every, 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 five, every five to six years is the, the norm of chip sealing. Now, if if you don't have people backing out of their driveway and stopped and turning their steering wheel with the wheel stop, it doesn't, it, you know, that damages the street on a 110 degree day. It, <clears> again, <throat> it's just like a street is like a roof. How, how much damage, what's the weight? You know, what are all these factors? He feels that, he said, I can't guarantee you how many years it's going to be, but he thought we would be able to get quite a few years. Do you remember, Larry? Oh, boy. Was it five it years five, yeah. before we would have to do anything? But he, he felt that the surface below would, would be adequate to last years longer. It would be the chip seal and re-oil in five years. But, yeah, but that doesn't matter whether it's his or the process that we used to use. That it hasn't changed. Pat, I'm not saying I'm disgruntled against this. I'm a little upset. When we talked about it from Corey's, I thought that guy was going to come here and give us a presentation himself for him to open the company himself. 
That's what should be done because we're talking a magnitude of streets here. We're, and we're gonna, this is just a, a trial run to see if it's going to last. It's fixing the streets. Period. I mean, I'm not sure what I'm You said three inches to one inch. Is that three inches before it's back down? Or is that three inches after? He's, mill, he's got a milling machine that's eight foot wide. Right. He can mill three inches deep at right. the curb and let the inch feet in. So is that three inches? Before it's packed down? <coughs> I think that. Yeah, it's been finished. Finish so, 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 so you're going to have less than an inch of asphalt in the middle of that street. No, no, no. no. James, this is, let, let, me, let me say this because when he was talking about this, I thought of Jerry. Because Jerry's talked for years about how the streets right. have worn here and they're humped in the beginning because right. you go down with that other piece and you put another right. and they keep wearing off here. That's exactly what he's saying, is that you go in, you don't have to melt because it's already worn. What he's saying is that he's sloping the asphalt as he lays it. It's not just milling it out to make more of a hole. It's filling it up so it's more level. But it's going to be deeper asphalt at the edges than it is in the center. But he's not taking the center off. And no, I, and I, I understand the whole process. Okay. 100%. So you're saying it's going to be three inches on that curve and an inch eight inches, eight feet in. If that's what we and that, want. And if, if, he, if, we, if we want him to mill the whole street up, he'll mill the whole street up. But that's just if we want to mill, right if we want well, him to mill, If we want him to mill three yeah. inches the whole way across eight foot, he'll do that. He, he, this is his idea of what he thought he could do for us, the cheapest, well, get the most bang for our buck, but he's willing to do whatever we want. But Patrick, I think if I'm reading you right, James, you're saying at the end there's only got to be an inch. No, that's an inch new on what's there. He just don't have to fill that many. Right. And that inch won't last a year. Well, if it's added, <laughs> it's added <laughs> it See, the, I it took won't it. Last a year. You I took it that the begin that the middle of it is not even going to be touched. Basically, it's bl it's blending together with the right. sides. Did you it's get that back? When he blends that side in, that you're not even doing much with that side. He feels the center of our streets are solid enough that an inch right. will, will handle the traffic. If you think differently, I, I can't argue that. That's your opinion. But I, I'm not about to change your opinion because I don't have scientific proof. But he's got 30 years in this and he says, I am not coming to this town. To do a bad job because he said, I want to establish this business for me and my son in this area. And, and he wanted to come to do coverage and us at the same time to save everybody expense. So, let me ask you a couple of questions. What are the alternatives? What is the timetable that you that anybody can do this? You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, at some point, you're going to have some. I, I would. Yeah, I would say if we call a contractor right now, we'd be lucky to get them in here in this, this spring. So if we want something done yet this year, these people are our option, or, or we are we chance to take our chances, and, uh, and, and we wait for whatever the board would I'm like. I'm sorry to ask this question, I probably should know this, but is there a certain period of time that the city has to spend the money for roads? Oh, yes. Yeah, the end of the fiscal year, which is September 30th at the end of the fiscal year. Yes. And and that's restricted, <laughs> so the restricted money from the state and, and the matching portion. But option. How much money are we supposed to be spending in the first year? Before the 30th. Huh? For September 30th? Yeah. Yeah. How much money is the uh, is the deadline that we got to spend? I didn't figure the extra third or fourth, but there's it was two hundred and seven last year. How much? Two hundred and seven thousand last year. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the number is. Yeah, it should be a number for you to look at for the standpoint of yeah. um, what you want to do.
fun. Well, the point, the, the, the point is that we spend anything on screens. So, um, yeah. 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 Well, when Arlene came back today, um, I looked and there's three months of highway allocations that never that have been added in there. Yeah. Um, so it should at be. least that, maybe okay. more. But we run right at 115,000 from the state. And then you have to match that with 30%. And then, you know, like I said, it's right at 200,000 of what we usually try to do. And the, the bags of stuff that Patrick is purchasing the fillables, that that is the there's some of that that, that money's come out of okay. Well, for what it's worth, um, you know we can we can sit and say we've got you know we I I've said this forever, we have to spend the funds, but when it's all said and done, we also have to have some streets. And you know, right now, that's one of the biggest complaints that comes into the office. Um, it's amazing that, that how many people say, come in or call or whatever, and say, why can't we have the lines painted, the parking lines? And as important as that may be, it kind of makes me shudder a little bit to think about putting brand new bright yellow paint on a piece of crap out there. <laughs> so I keep thinking, so why don't we fix streets before we think about painting lines? So I had to chuckle to myself when I <coughs> drove into Coolidge and here's this whole main street down there, beautiful black pavement from side to side and the most pretty yellow striped lines you ever saw in your life and I don't know if Harry put them down or somebody else. But, you know, we sit and argue, if I can, about how it's done and why it's done and whatever, and we need to think about the people who have 30 and 40 years in the business and respect what they, what they have once in a while. When, when our own people were fixing these streets, you know, you ask about the holes and this and that and the other thing. The reason we didn't have holes after they were fixed was because they went out and mailed them out and fixed them, so forth and so on. We haven't had the material, except for the one year after I got in office, that we used it. Before that, it was dried out before they got to it. Again, by mandate. So, if we can do that five and a half, seven, you know, we know that Wyoming and, and, and uh, Colorado streets, Boomer had said that for a long time, that top surface is gone because they were never resurfaced. They were never chip and sealed. They were never, they never held up water. They never were treated properly because of the lack of and the restrictions of the kind of material we had. There's different sites that if you go out and look, when they, when, you know, Leon came in, took them to death, when they did have the good material, that they had laid a half a block of really good streets because the material was right, they had to help, and they did, the, they did them right. This hasn't been about lack of knowledge, and it hasn't been about any micromanaging. These guys have known what they were doing, and I, it just needs to be said. But if, you're, if you would prefer that, they don't, that we don't do this locally, then we need to get people who are experienced in the business and stop micromanaging. And as far as the engineering is concerned, there's some places that the engineering needs to be done. If I have to go dig a trench, and that is gonna go through a water line, then I wanna know where that water line is. I want somebody to go out there and do a survey and so forth to know where that is. If I'm gonna put a fence on the line, I want a survey to know where that line is. But if that road is exactly like somebody has fixed for the last 30 years and he knows exactly how to fix it, turn him loose. 
We don't tell John Carter how to go and do his job. He's been there for 30 years. We don't tell James how to sell his insurance. We didn't tell Don how to teach. We don't tell Bob how to teach. We don't tell Larry how to do his job. And it just seems to me like that we sit and haggle over how's this gonna be done and wait, you know, the process rather than the job. I think you ought to ask him what it costs to put two inches on the inner instead of an inch. Well, his point was that we've got such a good center in the first place that, you're, that you know, we can do that if we think it needs two inches. But the point is it's already there. And I, like I said, I heard Jerry talking about that. You've got this good top with nothing wrong with it, and then the sides are worn out. It just seemed to me like he was saying exactly what Jerry had said. Yeah, but what I'm saying is some of these streets are so high in the center, they have to be cut down. Exactly what you're talking about up there when we've done St. Rose. The water puddles in front of the rectory before it can run out to the street because of the oil in it that's sitting there. The other thing we're talking about, and nobody say anything about it, is the intersection by uh, <clears throat> where you used to live uh, there that's got that big dip in it. Yeah. What are we going to do about that? The uh, one block further north, people have complained and complained and complained about that intersection there. So if we're going to do only what you're saying, we're not fixing that stuff. He, he looked at that. Well, there hasn't been anything said here tonight about what they're going to do with that. That intersection where you go west out of town there. Okay. <clears throat> I there don't know what, I, I, we're back to micromanaging that we're going to no, tell this not. man we're that how to do something. No, we're talking about the problems we got in town that we got to correct. Okay. But, and we had, we had JEO out here and they looked at it and they said, well, with a minimum, we can put some tubes in there. If he puts tubes in just like JEO, they're not gonna charge us $40,000 engineering to do it. I don't know, but it seems to me that for 127 or $37,000 that man bid, and we have a chance to see if he can do the work, they can't be any worse than they are. So if we want to sit and talk about it and not spend any money and and then try to find a way to make it up and throw it down a rat hole because we've got to get rid of it, then fine. But it's just like we were talking earlier that we've done things, you know, we've got no tools, we've got no this, we've got no that, but then when we try to do something, well, no, we can't do that. That would go against what we all know we can't do. So, so if, we're, if your minds are made up, then we're not going to go anywhere anyway. How valid is this document? Pardon? How, I mean, how would we need to adhere to this document at all? Okay. Well, the latest one that came out, apparently Larry asked J.E.O. to do. That's what Steve told me. That's that $500,000 deal. Half a million dollars for Jerry Street. Half a block. Two tenths of a block. Okay, but we, we're not. I, we, we can't. We can't keep calling the man and having him do this. No, but we're not obligated to. We're not obligated to do any of them. That we've never done any of them. That's what's wrong. We we do a one and six, and nothing ever gets done because because of whatever. And he said to me, "There's no way you can do this right now." So I said, "When did this come up? We've never seen oh, it." Well, and he said, "Larry wanted that." So. So if we're gonna, you know, if we're gonna keep changing the game, so he said I would suggest you do just maintenance and decide what you're gonna do next year. So we just keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. But we have a chance to do what's on that one and six or is that road that is proposed. That's why I sent him out there. As is Wyoming. And we would be completing part of the one and five. I, I mentioned this the last time we talked about this. I went down the street to Porridge. 99% of them are cement. And the ones he did, I was not impressed with. Okay. Did you know which ones he did? There's only three streets in town that are asphalt. Well, the ones, that they told me that, so if, if they're 99% what? Concrete, you say? Mm -hmm. Where, well, what I was on was gravel. So there's not too many concrete. I would say it was 90%. Where, 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 
Right. Everything but Main Street and a little bit off Main was asphalt. Everything else is concrete. I drove around the whole town. So what was that black surface I saw? If it was that was over top of the concrete. I have no street. idea what you saw as far as black surface. Where I saw asphalt was down on Main Street and then off on a, a street that went to the south. Uh, and it was that mill, and I was not impressed with it. Well, what was wrong with it? It was, in my opinion, very shiny. Based on what, though? I mean, based on my opinion. But but I mean, is it was it rough? Was it? It was very rough, very uneven. Well, was I really uneven, extremely rough. And when I I guess my opinion well, when this guy was talking about he does Coleridge Streets. Should be more. He does Coleridge Street, one street in Coleridge. Well, and then, the rest are all cement. It's like Wausau's all cement. It's like Partington's all cement. It's like Nambrera's all cement. The reason he wants to come up here to Crofton is we don't have cement streets. And he's we running have out of towns right now. that don't have cement streets. We have concrete right out here all the way up and around. We have concrete here, from there to here. Wait, what is that, one street? No, the, the main street's concrete, right? No, underneath. Uh, pardon? Underneath, underneath, underneath is concrete. And, and Sharon Street's concrete, the center. That's, so that's, well, that's three streets out of 69. Okay, so 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 is your plan then to make them all concrete? Because yes. because yes. up there, yes. there's just as many holes in the concrete as there is in the asphalt. Where, where? On Main Street. Because the holes are in the asphalt. The holes are in the asphalt. So you want the asphalt taken off the top of the concrete? Yeah, see, I don't get that. And, and, no, and I won't not. argue with that, no, I'm James, not. because I don't know. I'm not, that's you know, obviously I'm not. From here to here, it's, it's concrete. From this corner to that corner, it's concrete. But that's brand new. Right. Right. That concrete in the Main Street is probably a lot older, right? What concrete is Main Street? And we know it is, and, and it is covered with asphalt. Concrete underneath is asphalt. Concrete. When you take that, take that plan that you think about, and I agree. Finish right here with concrete and keep going all the way down. Take it out, no more asphalt all the way up. And then figure, and then our our allotment every year would be suffice if you start right here. You don't have a time frame. I wouldn't start here. I would take the worst streets in town. And, well, and I, I agree with this guy's opinion, which are the worst streets in town. them concrete. And See, we can't put asphalt. Or we can't put. We can't go out and do that many streets in concrete. No, I'm not saying we can't. So if we can, no, that's why I said can. if we can get some of the cheaper repair done, so no, the drive it, it goes back to spend a dollar to save a dime. It goes back to spending money. And, and you do not know this is going to work. You even said it yourself. We should see and see what happens. I'm not willing to spend $160,000 to see what happens. What? But if I know if I spend $160,000 to spend, my grandkids won't have to worry about it. Well, no, yes, it will, because you <laughs> seem to think that there's no more upkeep, but there is, James. What we upkeep do we have on Sharon Street? Boomer, I'm going to let you talk. Okay, we're not, we're, we, got, look, that, we have an motion. He's got a motion on the floor. No second. With well, no second. So it's a big guy, right? Is that the official thing? Yeah. Well, that's no second. No second? Yes. Yes. 